Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, today I rise to offer this resolution to commemorate June 10, 2019, the 100th anniversary of Michigan's ratification of the 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which extended national suffrage to women. The women of Michigan were among the earliest leaders in the fight for, the nas for national women's suffrage. Because of their tireless work, Michigan ratified the 19th Amendment on June 10, 1919, less than 10 days after it passed the U.S. Congress. As we celebrate their success a century later, it is important to honor those who championed the movement and to reflect on their unyielding persistence during the decades-long struggle. The fight for women's suffrage began in Michigan in 1846, two years before the Women's Rights Convention of Seneca Falls, New York. A woman named Ernestine Rose traveled to our state capitol, which was at the time located in Detroit, to discuss extending suffrage to women with members of the legislature. Just three years later, a Michigan Senate committee proposed a universal suffrage amendment to the Michigan Constitution, which would have extended suffrage to both women and African Americans. No action was taken on the proposal. In committee, in fact, its opponents commented on its unusualness and its needlessness. Extending voting rights would not be considered again until nearly 20 years later, when in 1866, the Michigan legislature considered its first bill to extend suffrage to women. That bill was defeated by just one vote. Undeterred, the women of our state used this shortcoming as a motivation to fight harder than ever. They organized and formed the Michigan State Suffrage Association and later the Michigan Equal Suffrage Association. Members of those groups lobbied state lawmakers and actively campaigned to spread their message to the public. Over the next 50 years, their hard work caused decision makers to consider extending voting rights to women again on several occasions, resulting in four additional rejected amendments to the state constitution, two additional rejected bills, and one short-lived victory, a law granting women suffrage in municipal elections that was held unconstitutional by the Michigan Supreme Court shortly after it passed. Nevertheless, the women of our state persisted and continued to exert unparalleled determination to achieve suffrage. Their efforts did not go unnoticed. Instead, their efforts ignited conversations among citizens across Michigan and garnered support from men and women alike. Finally, in 1918, 72 years after Ernestine Rose traveled to Detroit, those citizen allies passed a ballot initiative granting women the right to vote in Michigan. One year later, in 1919, Michigan became one of the first states to ratify the 19th Amendment. Thanks to the over seven decade long effort of these women, their daughters, granddaughters, and great granddaughters can proudly cast their ballots and Michigan women were immediately presented with new opportunities politically, socially, and economically. In 1919 alone, the first all-women jury was seated in Detroit. Ella Eggleston of Hastings became the first woman to be appointed as a probate judge. Phoebe Patterson of Plymouth became the first woman justice of the peace. And Anna Shaw of Big Rapids became the first woman in the nation to receive the Distinguished Service Medal. One year later, in 1920, Eva McCall Hamilton of Grand Rapids, whose portrait graces the west wall of this chamber, was the first woman elected to the Michigan legislature, serving as a state senator. Michigan's ratification of the 19th Amendment was a tremendous milestone in making Michigan citizens of our state and nation more free. But there was still, and there still is, more work to be done. For many years after 1919, African Americans, Native Americans, and Asian Americans, and others were still unable to freely participate fully in their government. Today, while a vote cannot be denied on the basis of race, sex, or ethnicity, we still face unique challenges, just as new generations of Michiganders will well into the future. 
But no matter the challenge, the determination of Michigan suffragists serves as an inspiration to any person standing strong in their convictions and fighting for change. Because while these strong women faced rejection after rejection, they were never defeated. Their persistence paved the way to their victory, and their victory will continue to inspire generations of Michiganders to be bold, to be an unstoppable force in the face of a seemingly unmovable object. Thank you. In honor of these great suffragists, I ask for your support of my resolution, and I'd like my remarks printed in the journal.